and welcome to this uh, episode of our program, Cairo Local uh, Times, where we are having an in look to oversee Egypt closely. In today's episode, we will uh, get a sneak peek of what Egypt's live in the day, and uh, we'll start by the day with the local news in a while. You can contact us through our uh, media uh, channels, different social uh, channels that will appear right in front uh, of you uh, in this break and we'll come back. Right, welcome back and to the local news of the day and Minister of Industry and Trade Tariq Qabil announced that the ministry will establish a new solar energy project for industrial purposes within the next five years, adding that the ministry is cooperating with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, the UNIDA, and New and Renewable Energy Authority. The cost of the project will reach around $6.5 million dollars financed by the Global Environment Facility in order to provide energy for the food, textile and chemical industries as they are. Kabil said that the project is part of the government's strategies to generate 20% of Egypt's energy for renewable resources by the year 2020, which amounts to 7,200 megawatts. The minister said that the project is divided into four main parts. The first is about creating the policies and incentives to use renewable energy technologies. The second part is about promoting the benefits of renewable energy, while the third is about encouraging local industries and supporting uh, local investors to produce the components of the solar energy plants. The fourth part is about training employees in the renewable energy sector. Moving on to our next uh, local news and chairperson of the Egyptian natural gas holding company, the EGAS, Mohammed uh, Al Masri, said that Egypt is set to begin exporting natural gas in the second half of 2019. Uh, of course, this is uh, a report that we are uh, going to take uh, um, later on before uh, we uh, move on to our uh, next local uh, I guess the report is uh, ready so let's watch the report and we'll come back for discussion yes Mohammed al Masri said that Egypt is set to begin exporting natural gas in the second half of 2019 he added that Egypt is on track to achieve self-sufficiency through the discovery of the Zohr gas field in the Mediterranean waters. He noted that all factories receive 100% of their gas needs. Moreover, he said that roughly 2 million Egyptian pounds were rescheduled on installments extending over 3 to 5 years after payment of 10% of the debts, adding that natural gas was supplied to an iron and steel factory to operate three units after a three-year suspension. He explained that iron factories were production energy cost is estimated at 10 to 12 billion BTUs per ton are overshooting the prices. Mosley pointed out that Egypt consumes 5.2 billion cubic feet of gas per day, while production amounts to 4.2 billion cubic feet, adding that a plan is in place to boost production to 50 billion cubic feet as soon as Zohr field production is linked to the national grid, which is expected by the end of the year. Additionally, he argued that Egypt had the necessary infrastructure to allow distribution of some 9 billion cubic feet of gas per day and export 1.88 billion cubic feet, noting that the Ministry of Petroleum has put together a plan to utilize their capabilities and pre-revenues to the state by 2020-2021. He explained that the gas signed contracts with Russia, Oman and France to import 45 shipments of liquefied gas with the first shipment due to arrive in February. 
Mosri noted that oil gas needs of Bani Suif, Borolos and the new administrative capital power plants so now overall some 100 million cubic feet of gas are being consumed have been secured. Right, welcome back and to uh, with the rest of our local news and the General Authority for the Suez Canal Economic Zone is negotiating with a number of local and foreign companies to establish 10 new projects. Chairperson of the Suez Canal Economic uh, Zone, Ahmed Darwish, told press that the authority reached an uh, advanced stage in negotiations with Arab and foreign companies to establish a medical and uh, therapeutical city, an institute of nursing, a ceramic factory and an iron factory on an area of one million square meters. The Rish added that the authority is in the initial stages of negotiations about establishing an aluminium compound on an area of five million square meter with the help of the British German investment a factory for turbines, for wind energy projects, a petroleum refinery project and a paper industry city with Indonesian and Malaysian investments. The authority is also negotiating projects related to developing the building materials industries with British investments, data, uh, rather an information technology and data centers with the help of Dutch and finish investments as well as building a business park and hotel to serve Aina Sukhna ports. A young Egyptian designer, Reda Aweli, was selected as one of the 2017 Forbes 30 under 30. Europe's in the arts category to become the first Egyptian woman ever to appear in the Forbes European list. This is the same list that last year featured big names including John and Patrick uh, Collison, Maria Sharapova and Dill. The 27-year-old graduated from the German University in Cairo, the GUC, in 2011, receiving an MA scholarship to study at the Institute of Design in Florence, Italy. She has a rich experience in graphic design as she took the vow to contribute to the building of the future of graphic design in Cairo, where she worked as graphic design tutor, both the American University in Cairo, AUC and the GUC. While he also joined several multinational advertising agencies, working with several multinational brands. And we move on to uh, the headline of the day, of course, and tonight at 9 p.m. Egypt will meet Cameroon at the 2017 African Cup of Nations, the African final. I guess this is the day or the news of the day. We are all awaiting with eagerness to see such a match. Egypt qualified to the final after it uh, defeated Burkina Faso on uh, Wednesday for three in the penalty shootout with Egypt's goalkeeper Assam Al Hadari being named the man of the match. Cameron, on the other hand, qualified after it snatched the victory from Ghana on Thursday through a goal scored in uh, minutes uh, or in the 72nd minute and another one in the 93rd minute. Thus, the match's result ended 2 nil in Cameron's favour. The only goal scored against Egypt throughout the tournament was in its semi-final match against Burkina Faso. Egypt and Cameroon met 11 times at different stages at the AFCON. Egypt won on six occasions, they drew on two occasions, while Cameroon won on three occasions. Two of Egypt's wins over Cameroon were in the African, rather in the AFCON final match. Um, 1986 and 2008 in which Egypt snatched the title. The winner tonight will raise the African princess, the name given to uh, the uh, football fans for the African trophy. While uh, we are watching, let's learn more about the history of this important tournament in Africa. 
Throughout the history of the Nations Cup, three different trophies have been awarded to the winners of the competition. The first two trophies were permanently awarded to the first teams that won them for third time. This system has now given way to permanently rotating trophy with replicas being awarded to the current winners. The original trophy made of silver was the Abdelaziz Abdullah Salim trophy named after its donor. And the first calf present, Egyptian Abdelaziz Abdullah Salim, was in charge of calf for only a year 1957 to 1958, but is a significant character in the history of African football as Africa's first representative to FIFA. The trophy was made of silver and resembled in shape the trophy awarded to the winners of the English League Cup. Egypt was the first nation to lift the trophy in 1957 and defended it in 1959 as the United Arab Republic. But it was Ghana who took the trophy home permanently as the first three-time winner in 1978, 1963, 1965, 1978. Ethiopia, Sudan, Congo, Zaire, Morocco were some of the other teams to lift the trophy. The second one was awarded from 1980 to 2000 and it was named Trophy of African Unity or African Unity Cup. It was given by the Supreme Council for Sports in Africa to the CAF prior to the 1980 tournament and it was a cylindrical piece with the Olympic rings over a map of the continents engraved on it. Going to 2000 edition of the tournament, three nations, Egypt, Cameroon and Nigeria, had lifted the trophy of the African unity two times each. While Egypt failed to make an impact, Nigeria and Cameroon faced each other in the final and it needed a penalty shootout to identify the permanent holder of this prize, with Cameroon edging Nigeria to lift the trophy for a third time. In 2001, the third trophy was revealed, a gold-plated cup designed and made in Italy, Cameroon, Permanent holders of the previous trophy were the first nation to be awarded the new trophy after they won the 2002 edition. Egypt became the first team to win the latest trophy three times, and they did it three times in a row. Unlike previous winners who would have them taken the trophy home, Egypt were presented with a special full-size replica. They got to keep first and second time winners usually get a smaller size replica for their trophies cabinet. Right, welcome back. I guess that was the history about the tournament. Today we will be awaiting with all our uh, with all our pressures or, and, and all our hands put on uh, the woods. Let's just um, hope our uh, fighters would really do a the best of what they can tonight. Uh, best wishes for our fighters in this battlefield. Uh, of course, uh, our hearts just, uh, and, and we are all uh, standing behind our team there. Um, to another battlefield, and of course, the armed forces with their all uh, uh, efforts that they are doing to eradicate uh, terrorism, to battle uh, another uh, in another uh, field here is the military magazine uh, during this uh, uh, day or the latest news of our uh, brave armed forces let's watch the military magazine and come back general commander of the armed forces and minister of defense and military production said isubhi met with a delegation from the Middle East Institute for Strategic Studies in USA. The meeting dealt with the Egyptian-American strategic relations and military cooperation between the armed forces of both countries and the efforts to support the security and stability in the region. The Defense Minister expressed the importance of the development of relations, partnership and cooperation between both countries in various fields. General Commander of the Armed Forces and Minister of Defense and Military Production Sir Isubhi witnessed the honoring ceremony of a number of military leaders who have spent the duration of their service to the Armed Forces and referred to retire on the 1st of January 2017. In his speech, the Defense Minister thanked all the leaders for the effort during their service and promised the Armed Forces keenness to provide all the capabilities 
to build and rehabilitate commanders and officers at all levels throughout the duration of their service to the armed forces. He also stressed that the armed forces will always be a solid block in keeping and preserving Egyptian state entity. Right, welcome back. And from uh, the uh, this segment uh, uh, dedicated to uh, our brave armed uh, forces and, of course, our uh, great military and we go on to another segment another dear segment to egypt another sector which is uh, very important to egypt which is the tourism and tourism is an important uh, segment in uh, revenue of course and it is an important uh, segment that many rely on and uh, hence we are uh, presenting to you the travel magazine or rather the tourism magazine. This is part uh, of the uh, beautiful Egypt and the touristic events that went through uh, out this week. Let's watch. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said that the Egyptian embassy in Berlin was able to lift the last restriction on German flights to Sharm el-Sheikh and South Sinai. In a press release, the ministry said that German Federal Ministry of Transport and Digital Infrastructure decided to exempt German airlines from flying 26,000 feet above South Sinai, which will allow German airlines to operate direct flights to Sharm el-Sheikh without paying additional insurance. Germany had warned its citizens from visiting Egypt after a Russian airplane crashed in October 2015. The Egyptian foreign ministry said the decision opens the path to full inflow of German tourism to Sharm el-Sheikh and South Sinai. Germany was ranked first in terms of the number of tourists coming to Egypt in 2016 with a total of 655,000 tourists. The Ministry of Antiquities affiliated museums have achieved total revenues of $45 million with 974 and 400 visitors in 2016. According to a statement by the Ministry of Museums Division, the museums achieved the highest revenues in December, recording Egyptian $6.8 with 117,000 visitors, while the lowest revenues reached was $1.7 million in June. Minister of Antiquities Khaled al anani said the number of visits of museums and archaeological sites has increased during the recent months starting from October, which coincide with the winter season when the tourism flow increased in Egypt. The number of the museums affiliated to the Ministry of Antiquities is 31 across the country, including 21 open-air museums and 8 under development museums, as well as two closed museums. The closed museums are El Arish and Beni Suif museums, while the ministry is still developing the Greek-Roman Museum, the Port Said Museum, the Ahmad Arabi Museum, 
the Tanta Museum, the Museum of Tains, Rommel Cave Museum, Muhammad Ali Museum in Shobra, and the Royal Vehicles Museum in Bulaq. The Ministry has opened three museums in the second half of 2016 after finishing their development, including Farouk Corner Museum, which was opened in August, Malawi Museum opened in September, and Komushim Museum opened in November. Style love locks have begun to appear on Stanley Bridge in Alexandria, Egypt, dividing local opinion. Padlocks began appearing on the bridges of Paris and other European cities more than seven years ago, left by people seeking to symbolize their enduring love and often inscribed with couples' names. Lovers take quickly throw the keys into the river. A famous location for this practice was the Pont de Art footbridge over the Seine before workmen began removing hundreds of thousands of padlocks last year due to fears the sheer weight could put the 19th century structure at risk. Social media reports suggest the couple could have catalyzed the trend in Alexandria last year by clasping their own romantic token to Stanley Bridge, an action which reportedly stirred controversy online. The gesture also appeared to divide opinion amongst the locals. A woman said she felt the practice here wasn't serious compared to abroad, but another passerby said he thought the gesture was beautiful. Movie enthusiasts have been transported back to the golden era of Egyptian cinema at a poster exhibition in Amman where a number of iconic Egyptian movie images have been on display. Nostalgia and a love of mid-century Egyptian cinema encouraged Jordanian producer-director Mahmoud Massad to give some of his treasured posters a new lease of life. It took him 20 years to collect his vintage film posters turning to the internet and traveling to Cairo to hunt down items he needed. The hand-printed designs have been mounted on linen canvas for maximum effect. He said he was not solely motivated by his passion, but by a desire to remind younger creatives about the quality of Egyptian cinema over the decades. Right, as I said, uh, that we are awaiting tonight's match, which will begin at uh, 9 Cairo local time. And to have some analysis to the sports ahead of uh, this much anticipated uh, uh, match between Egypt and Cameroon, we have with us uh, sports analyst and critic uh, Mr. Diyah Salah. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. 
And if I start with uh, our team, and we need to know the history of our team in this particular uh, tournament. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, we hope uh, that today at 10.25 or 10.30 we'll have a very good celebration altogether. Um, the, talking about the, the history of the tournament and the history of our, uh, of our national team, uh, everybody had the, the, big, the big hope and wish that we were the upper hand in the tournament. Mm. A little bit of issues happened before the tournament, uh, not the best or the most uh, anticipated player selection happened, mm. uh, and that was down to, to the coach's decision. Um, I think overall uh, we, uh, as the Egyptian team, uh, and Cameroon are two big rivals in, in Africa. Mm. Uh, uh, when you look on paper uh, and history, I think both teams deserve to be in the final. Uh, when you look at uh, the, the different individual stages of the tournament, um, it was a little bit different. Yeah. Um, uh, we ended uh, the group on top, seven points. Uh, Cameroon ended second place. Uh, and again, you know, we, we've heard a lot of issues about, uh, oh, we weren't that good, we weren't that bad. From, from all the different uh, sports analysts and, and, uh, and journalists and all that. Uh, but again, I'm very confident. Um, I feel that uh, the way we were uh, uh, handling each game by game, uh, we've done very well. And I hope uh, that will pay off tonight. Yes, if I may speak about another uh, issue that was really uh, the discussion of uh, many people, the fitness, the difference in fitness and uh, will our uh, team be able to continue as they did the last 120, uh, 120 exact minutes? And uh, despite all uh, expectations, they did it. Sure. Uh, be besides the, the, the physical fitness, um, if we go a little bit back and we talk about our uh, work rate and our mental uh, strengths in the, in the past two matches, mm. I think we, shown, we showed very, very, very good uh, potential. Yes. Uh, especially, you know, when we were playing in the Morocco game, um, everybody thought, okay, five, ten minutes left, uh, we're going to go into extra time and penalties. And, 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 and when you look at the performance um, in the last uh, ten minutes, and then you can see that there was a free kick done by Abdullah Said and Muhammad Salah, that shows, it showed me right there that there was mm. uh, totally team concentration mm. on the pitch, mm. and players were, were very much working together. Uh, they didn't give up until the last moment, and this is something that you have to give credit to the, to the, to the, to the coach, Cooper, you know. And, and we also have to speak about techniques, because I, I mean here, um, on the ground, uh, they play different to suit the team they, yes. uh, they are uh, confronting. Sure. And we've seen this uh, in the Morocco, or between Egypt and Morocco, and we've seen another kind of, 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 of playing yes. in, 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 with the Burkina Faso. So. Yes. Well, the, yeah, the way I, I, I look at it is that uh, Cooper and his staff, uh, football is about, uh, it's like a short-term project. When you go into a, a tournament like this, uh, you need results, uh, you need points at the first stage. And it's something that we've done very well. We ended uh, the first round, uh, the group stage, top of our uh, group. Uh, we haven't conceded any goals in the first three matches. So that gives a very good indication. A level of confidence is very high uh, mm. amongst the defenders. Our, our superhero, uh, the goalkeeper, Assam Hadri, of course. And uh, when you look at figures today, I mean, most of the modern football mm. clubs and coaches, they always rely on a lot of performance analysis and data. Mm. Uh, sometimes you always expect something from a player uh, that actually you don't see his performance on the pitch, but on paper, He's exceeded uh, yeah. what's been requested from him. Uh, we went into the, the second uh, game, Morocco and then Burkina Faso. Um, again, back to what you were talking about, the physical part. I think I didn't feel that during the 120 minutes we played on the second match, we weren't out, outplayed uh, physically, no, yeah. even though their team had the upper hand in the yes. body build. Yeah. Um, I think we, 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 we performed exactly what was requested from us and at the end of the day like i said it's a short-term project you want this we you want to uh, to advance to the next stage and, and i think we've done that very well mm. for the game of tonight um let's let me ask you about what plan what sort of plan 
uh, would be put there? Well, I'm not in the position of uh, Cooper, of, of, of Cooper, of course. Uh, I wish I was, but uh, you know, no. He 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 definitely knows how to deal uh, with the situations, and that. Uh, and with some of our yes. uh, players who are injured and uh, that, that, missing ones. That's a lot of stress, of course, you're yes. right. Yes. We, we, well, I think Cooper has, has dealt with every situation in a, in a proper way and in a very successful way. And again, when you go back to the numbers, uh, uh, you look at some of the, the stats that we've, um, that we've achieved in, the, for example, the Burkina game. Uh, they had more possession than us, maybe. Same thing with Ghana and, mm. uh, and, and, uh, and, and Cameroon. Cameroon did not have the best possession of the match, but at the end of the day, they, they managed to get the points. Mm. From our side, yes, we did have a couple of, uh, of very effective uh, injuries at the beginning. Yeah. Um, I think, again, Cooper uh, treated that in a very, very smart way and mm. a very effective way as well. Uh, we've seen Mohamedi came in mm. and he made a very, very big difference. Uh, yes. uh, to the performance of the but team. But also the last the, option, Neri was something. Of course, yes. Uh, well, sometimes in football, you know, so football can a little, be a little bit of uh, bad luck to some of the players. Mm. And it could be good luck to some of the players. And maybe the way I look at it, this is maybe the best way to, to tell Hadri thank you and, yes, uh, definitely. and uh, well big, done big after all you. of these. <laughs> yes, he's been yes. appreciated all over the world. So um, I think what he's, what he's done with us. Uh, so far, it needs to be very much uh, appreciated. Yes, if we look uh, to the tournament itself, AFCON 2017, uh, in Gabon, and there were um, many surprises. Yes. And um, what, what, what exactly was surprising uh, uh, to you? And how well, do you view, by the, the way, the match of yesterday? The, there, uh, was, there were some good surprises and some not very pleasant surprises. Uh, if you talk about the overall... Um, Tournament. I think it was organized in a very uh, positive way. Mm. Uh, maybe some of the pitches weren't uh, the best. Um, some of the, uh, the the pitches caused injuries to some of the players. Mm. Uh, maybe long-term injuries, and I hope hope they can recover from that uh, quick. Um, the the crowd or the fans turn up as well in the stadiums was not as I expected. Uh, I thought uh, it would it would it, you know, we were going to see more filled uh, stadiums. Uh, that wasn't, uh, wasn't the case. A lot of stadiums were empty. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, but uh, overall, um, some of the teams, I think Morocco mm. did very well. I think uh, Burkina Faso did well as well. A uh, very young team, a uh, very bright team. And, um, uh, and overall, that, that's something that I've, I really liked about the, the age group of the players mm. has been decreased and is going down. I mean, if you look at the, the goalkeeper of Burkina Faso, he's mm. 20 or something like yes. that. And he's, uh, and he's a starter, so um, that's very good and positive for African football uh, in the future. Yes, I guess one of my colleagues who is very much professional in these sports, uh, uh, my colleague Nurmina Abdurrahman, and she said that the day that uh, the uh, goalkeeper uh, of Burkina Faso was born was the year when Hassan al Hadari. Played yes. his first match. Yes, I, I know Nirmeen very well. She's a very much, uh, yeah, she loves football, uh, yeah. more than a lot of people actually. I know she's very right. She knows exactly what he does in <laughs> more than 20 years yes. difference. And of course, uh, yeah. yeah. If we speak about Egypt vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, Cameron, a long history of rivalry, as yes. you said, competition and all this. And I guess that today would be a kind of um, very challenging uh, match. So tell me more about uh, well, <coughs> what went on between. Cameron I know and definitely a lot of people like to go back to history and uh, and build a little bit uh, upon that. But I mean, if you look back to the Moroccan game, for example, uh, when was the last time we beat Morocco? Okay, it was a very very long time ago. Yes, a lot of the players that are playing on the pitch uh, weren't even born when the last time that happened. And uh, we kept on saying, oh, we're going to have a rough time and, uh, you know, uh, beating Morocco and it hasn't happened since a long time ago. But I personally, uh, I'm not a fan of people that look back to, to, to these negative uh, uh, stats, you know. Today, I, it's just about what's going to happen in the next uh, 90 minutes. I think we are very prepared. Uh, the mental strength of the players is very, very high. The team spirit is very good. The work rate over the last... The whole tournament uh, is very, very acceptable, mm. and uh, I just want to take it from there. And I think uh, Cameroon—we've beat them uh, not just once or twice before. And I think we can do it again tonight and celebrate. 
Yes, I hope we celebrate all, of course, definitely. But, uh, what I have here is that, um, that Egypt was absent from the prestigious e yes. event in the last three editions, yes. which means that this year is very particular for us yes. to... Actually, actually uh, when you look at it from a different uh, perspective, uh, I think what the boys have done was something very, 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 uh, very unexpected. Because today, if you look at our national league today, mm. our local league today, we still play uh, the football matches without the crowd. Uh, we don't have that full potential and, and enjoyment of the football league that, that it used to be football a long time ago. So the, the, the players, again, you know, you know, once you take away, away crowd from the stadium, you lose a little bit of passion, you know. And, uh, and today the, the players, they're playing, from my point of view, not in the maximum leagues that they can. Uh, we brought in some professional players, uh, Nini, Salah, uh, Trezeguet, uh, Ramadan. And I think they've done uh, very well to raise this whole team spirit and, uh, and, um, and, and work in a very positive and a professional way. So I think uh, uh, no, we've done well, um, and hopefully we will, uh, like we said, we'll pay off tonight. Right. So, what history says versus what tonight we expect? So, what history say, and what should we be expecting? Egypt and Cameroon. Uh, Egypt beat Cameroon last two 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 times. Uh, we beat them in the finals and we're going to beat them again. <laughs> That's a very brief and short yes, answer. <laughs> yes, because like I said, today a lot of players, that we, don't, we, we shouldn't be putting pressure on, on players to, to you know, remember what happened in the past. Uh, there's a lot of circumstances that goes into every match. Uh, today we, we just have to look, look ahead of us and, uh, and, uh, and do our best. Right. Um, if I may speak about uh, crowds. Crowds. And, you know, the Egyptian crowds yes. are. And we have seen many, uh, I mean, near thousands ready uh, to go to the yes. moon in order to yes. just be yes. behind the team. Yes. Um, how do you view that? Uh, how do you view the role that is Foot played by our crowds? Well, football is a beautiful game, like you say, and it's a very passionate mm -hmm. game. Uh, I've been into countries around the world and people, they just no football and that's it. Uh, football brings happiness to, to the youngsters, to the big people, the olders and uh, I think uh, the, the, the beauty of football is that it unites, it's a uniting uh, sport, it brings people together and, uh, and uh, when people celebrate, I mean you've, you've seen the last couple of times we celebrated and we won the, the, the African championships, people were in the streets celebrating until, uh, until the next morning and that's the whole beauty of sports and football uh, in particular. Um, it's an international game, um, it's been played all over the world and, uh, and Africa is one of the big, con big continents today that has very, very good potential uh, players uh, from the physical side and technical side as well. So uh, but it, it's very important that, um, that FIFA today are promoting football everywhere in the world to bring different uh, nationalities and different people together. Yes. And th that's, the whole ha that's the whole purpose of, of, uh, of these international tournaments. Yes. I mean, you look at our last uh, game, uh, the crowd from Morocco were supporting uh, the Egyptian team against Burkina Faso. Uh, I have my friends from Libya, they were supporting the team. It was just a beautiful spirit that everybody wants Egypt to win. Yes, definitely. And we've seen that yes. from uh, our uh, Arab countries, even those who participated in the tournament. Yes. Um, you said very much, it, just to wrap up uh, our conversation here, but you've been speaking about states that have participated in this year's tournament and they all showed uh, yes. great efforts. Yes. If we just can give a hint on some of them who, who really participated. Yes, I think uh, if you look at the Burkina Faso team, for example, uh, I, think, I think they've done very well uh, to, reach, uh, to reach the semis. Um, if you look at uh, Cameroon as well, uh, I'm not going to go into a little bit of details about the, the, the scores and stuff like that, but again, when you look at the, the different, uh, uh, different players, like for, for example, you have players in Morocco and Algeria that play in Europe. They've came in and have done extremely, extremely well. But uh, from my point of view, I think Morocco, uh, Burkina Faso have done very, very well and they were very much surprising. Uh, during the tournament, 
and maybe a lot of people expected that Burkina Faso might reach the final. Mm. Uh, and that, sh that tells you a lot about the performances, the, 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 the work rate that they've had. And I think that they, uh, they've done well. And I think maybe the next tournament they'll do much better when their players grow a little bit and get a little bit more, more experience and, and, mm. and uh, mature a bit. Well, yesterday we've seen the third and fourth. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, how, how do you evaluate this match? They won in a very, very late goal. <laughs> But, uh, you know, again, uh, the, the third and the fourth place when you play, it's not always a very good measurement of, mm. of, of, uh, of football because, you know, both teams are, have been eliminated from the round mm. and they wanted to play in the final. A lot of coaches, sometimes they, they let their, their key players rest because they've had a long tournament. Um, they let in the subs, the younger players, they come in. So you know, Burkina Faso, I think they deserve to be... Uh, uh, to be um, to, to reach the third in the tournament. Yes. Finally here, and I said finally because really that amazed lots of people, the referees. And um, your evaluation to particularly the Egyptian matches. Well at, well, at the end of the day, I'm going to say a referee is a human being at the end. And uh, I, I really don't think that anything was done intentional or unintentional by any of the, uh, of the referees. Uh, I don't want to look or to evaluate referees, you know, we, we're in the final now and uh, no matter what the referees have done, um, tough luck for them. We, 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 you know, we, we've overcome whatever we had to, to, problems we had and I think we're in the final right now. Yes, I guess that is a very diplomatic answer, but yes. <laughs> Mr. Diya Salah, a sports analyst and critic, thank you very much for your input here. Thank you very much for having me and uh, hopefully tonight we will uh, all be celebrating. Uh, at yes, and we're crossing our, crossing fingers. our fingers. And best uh, of luck to our team playing there in Gabon. We hope, we all hope for them. Uh, best, best of uh, luck there. I guess that brings us to the end of uh, this episode of Cairo Local Time. Tomorrow would be another uh, snapshot on Egypt and what is happening in Egypt. Until tomorrow, it's goodbye.